Today I'm going to be reading two books about telephones. Both of them were made long ago, so the telephones look a lot different than they do today. Uh, telephones by Christine Schar. First printing in 1972. I like to telephone. I want to telephone Sam. I dial his number. See the dial? Sam's telephone rings. I hear a noise in my telephone. The noise tells me Sam's telephone is ringing. Sam lifts his telephone. I speak to him. He can hear my voice. A wire from my telephone goes to the exchange. Wires go from every telephone to the exchange. Every telephone has a number. I dial a telephone number. This tells the exchange which telephone I want. Most telephone wires go under the ground. Lots of wires make one big cable. Some big cables go under the sea. Ships put the cables out there. See the ship dropping the cable? It's just lying on the ocean floor connecting one continent to the other, or one island to the other. Long ago, there were no telephones. Men had to carry letters. They often rode fast horses. Do you know that what that was called? That was called the Pony Express. One letter carrier would um, give the letters to another letter carrier, and they would make it far distances, dropping off letters at stations along the way. Do you hear that? That's my dog sending me a letter, <laughs> trying to call me on the dog phone through the door. Um, she thinks it might be dinner time, but she's wrong. Back to the book. Then men built tall machines on hills. They made signals with these machines. The men in the next town saw the signals. See, there's one signal and another. This old machine was called a telegraph. It sent signals along a wire. You could not talk into it. A man pushed a handle on the machine. This made signals go along the wire. Tap, 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 tap. It was Morse code. One of the first telephones looked like this. A man called Bell made it. Or, if you live in Pennsylvania, central Pennsylvania, um, you might read about Daniel Drawbaugh because it is thought that he actually invented the telephone. Here are some more telephones from long ago. Your grandfather and great-grandfather may have used one. Here is a kind of a telephone. They call it a new kind of telephone because this is a very old book. I had this kind of telephone. Here's a new kind of telephone. It only has one part. See the dial? So you would put your finger in the number you wanted and bring it all the way to this little piece of metal and then it would fly back. And then you'd pick another number and dial it towards the, till you touched this piece of metal and then it would swing back. This telephone is like a television. You can see your friend when you talk to them. Look, it's like a early computer. Some people use many telephones. This man has four telephones. This man has a special telephone that lots of people can hear him. Trains sometimes have telephones. People can make, that's my dog. Trains sometimes have telephones. People can make calls when they're on a train. There are telephones in mines. The miners can telephone to the man on the ground. Most elevators have telephones that you can telephone for help if, if, if you get stuck. Divers have special telephones in their helmets. They can talk to the men on the boat. See for yourself. Make your own telephone using two tin cans and some string. Keep the string tight. Telephone, dial, wire, exchange, cable, ground, sea, ship.
letter, horse, signal, telegraph, handle, old telephone, television, train, mine, miner, elevator, diver, boat, helmet, tin can, string. Now you will meet the dog. Did you see that dog walking in here? So we take a minute between between stories to put the dog out. Dog has a special muzzle. Oh, you can't see the dog. You just saw the dog's head go by. Go on, doggy. Okay. So the activity for today is going to be in the second book. The second book is called Timmy and the Tin Can Telephone. Copyrighted in 1959. Timmy woke up early, as usual. He bounced out of bed, ran to the window. Kit, Kit. She was his best friend. She lived in the house next door. Kit's window was empty. Where was she? Kit. Kit, he shouted louder this time. Still no Kit. Timmy blew his police whistle. <laughs> there was Kit in her window. And all the neighbors were in their window, too. Around the corner of the house came Father. He held the grass clippers in his hand. What's the idea at this hour of the morning? Father looked cross. Kit didn't hear me, so I blew my whistle, Timmy said, and woke up the whole neighborhood, his father scolded. Timmy, Timmy ran downstairs to meet Kit in the garden. They walked towards the garage. Father called after them. No more of that racket so early in the morning. Do you hear? But I have to tell Kit when I'm ready to go out, Timmy said. Then why not use the telephone, asked Father. That's what it's for. But it wakes everyone up in the house. What you need, said Father, is a signal to call each other. Let's make one. We'll need only a piece of string and a couple of bells. Bells, asked Kit. Yes, ordinary, ordinary bells, the kind you find at Christmas. They tied one end of the long piece of string to the bed in Timmy's room. Then they fastened a bell to the string between the bed and the window. Timmy dropped the string out of the window. Father and Kit went downstairs and took it across the garden. Father gave Kit a shorter piece of string. Now you go upstairs and lower this from your window, he said. Kit lowered the string. Father tied the two pieces together and Kit pulled. She fastened a bell to the string in her room and tied the string to a chair. Timmy put the string, Timmy pulled the string, sorry. Jingle, 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 jingle. Next morning, Timmy woke up early as usual. He bounced out of bed and ran to the window. He pulled the bell string. Jingle, 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 jingle. Kit was at the window. I heard it, I heard it, she shouted from across the yard. Let's go get our bikes, Timmy shouted back. Around the corner of the house came Father. He held the garden hose in his hand. It trailed behind him. Stop that racket, he cried. You woke up the whole neighborhood again. If you want to come, if you want to talk, come out here and do it. In a minute, they were in the garden. Didn't your bells work, asked Father. Yes, but we need to talk, too. There are ways of talking to each other without anyone else hearing you. Father picked up one end of the hose. Did you know that you can talk through this? Hold it to your ear, Kit. He took off the nozzle from the other end. 
Here, Timmy, you go as far away as the hose will stretch. Then use it like a telephone. Timmy walked away. Hello, Kit. Can you hear me? Kit looked surprised. Timmy, I hear you. Father laughed. Of course you hear him. The sound of your voice makes the air in the hose move back and forth very fast. The air is vibrating. When the vibrations reach your ear, you hear the sounds. Now it's my turn, said Kit. I can hear you too, Timmy shouted. Let's take the hose up to our rooms. No, Father said I'm using it, but I'll help you make your own telephone. Kit giggled. You couldn't. Well, not a real one. A real telephone needs electricity, but we can make one that will work, Father said. This time we'll use a string to carry the vibrations. All we need are two paper cups and a couple of nails. When Timmy came back with the cups and the nails, Kit and Father were sitting on the back steps. They had cut the piece of string a little longer than the distance between the two houses. Sit here, Timmy, said Father. Turn the cups upside down. Now poke a hole through the middle of the bottom with a nail. With Father helping, Timmy pushed one end of the string through a hole. He then tied several knots on one on top of the other. These knots should be big enough to keep the string from pulling through, Father said. They waited until Kit put the other end of the string through her cup and made some knots. There you are, said Father. Your telephone is finished. Doesn't look much like a telephone, Timmy said with a laugh. Can we really hear through it? Try it, said Father. Hello, Kit. Hello, Timmy. One at a time, Father suggested. Kit talked into her cup. Timmy put it to his ear. We're too close together, he said. I could hear you without any telephone. Kit went around the corner of the house and out of sight. Talk louder, Timmy shouted. I can't hear you. Father called to Kit. The string is touching the house. It won't vibrate when it touches anything. Go over to your yard and try it. Kit walked away until the string stretched tight. Can you hear me now? She asked into the cup. Hooray! It works! Timmy was excited, but as he put it to his mouth, the string pulled out of the cup. Pop! Aw, oh, it broke, Timmy said. Wait till I get another cup. Father stopped him. Never mind. Let's make a telephone that won't come apart so easily. This time we'll use two tin cans, small ones. Be sure the tops are off. We'll also need two good sized buttons. We'll use the same piece of string. With a long nail, Father punched a hole in the bottom of each can. He punched it from the inside and he flattened out the rough edges of the hole with a hammer. Timmy put one end of the string through the hole so it came out inside of the can. Then he poked the string in and out of the holes of the button. Now tie a knot in the string, Father said. Kit did the same with her end of the string. Let's try this telephone in the house, Timmy suggested. Kit carried the cans and string up to her room. She lowered one of the cans to Father. He took it across the garden. He looked up at Tommy's, Timmy's window. Lower a string, Timmy, he called, and I'll tie the can to it. Timmy pulled up the can. He stepped back until the string was between his until the string between his house and Kit's was tight. Hi, Kit. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, just like a real telephone. Next morning, Timmy woke up early as usual. He bounced out of bed and ran to the window. He pulled the string to ring Kit's bell. Jingle, 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 jingle came the answer. Timmy spoke softly into his telephone. Hi, Kit. Let's go out. Let's get out our bikes. No, let's talk on the telephones first, he heard Kit say. Around the corner came Father with a rake in his hand. He smiled. 
Timmy was in his window, Kit was in her window, and everyone else was sleeping. So maybe you can make some kind of a telephone. You can ask your parents what kind of telephones they had when they were young. You can ask your grandparents what kind of telephones and maybe they can find a picture and it will be a lot like the pictures in the books. But have fun with your tin can telephone. Sometimes when I make these recordings, I record them and then I find out that I never pushed the record button. And that's not fun and that's what happened with this one. And I think that's why, it, between that and having a headache, why I fell all over my words. But that's not going to stop you from having fun with your telephone.